What's up, s'mores? I'm Shannon Morse. Welcome to Morse Code, a channel all about technology reviews, tutorials, and how-tos. Today is part four of my security and privacy hashtag work from home series, all about identity and access management. If you are in charge of security at your company, you can check out my playlist of all of these episodes over on my YouTube channel. I will also link those down below. Now, before we get started on today's topic, I did want to thank my sponsor for this series. This episode episode is sponsored by WWPass. WWPass takes authentication seriously by giving companies right factor authentication, not just multi-factor authentication. Now I have stated human readable solutions are not the best solution. And with WWPass, you can eliminate the need for usernames and passwords by making your smartphone or a physical token your first authentication factor, with the second line of defense being your PIN or biometrics, none of which are ever received by WWPASS. Pass keys can be used as electronic IDs to authenticate and give folks access to accounts like collaboration tools such as Zoom. Everything is encrypted on the client side, so service providers cannot access user data, while data segregation helps keep data at rest protected. Their universal pass key ID allows your users proper access to buildings or labs, as well as digital access to applications or data storage. The pass key can also be set up to be used as identity identification for ID cards, or proof of coverage, or licensing, and consolidation of identifying documents. Pass keys can be used however your business sees fit, whether that's via a smartphone app, a smart card, or a physical token. And by authenticating users with these IDs that are not human readable, WWPASS aims to decrease identity theft and data breaches while still giving users access to top applications that they can use to get their work done. This series would not be possible without the support of WWPASS. WWPASS and viewers like you. Check out everything that WWPASS has to offer over at their website, that's WWPASS.com, and I would like to thank them for sponsoring my channel. Now, last time I discussed one single sign-on option that businesses use, which is called social logins, and I shared the pros and the cons of this feature. Now, this was my least favorite login option from a consumer perspective because of the privacy sacrifices that you make whenever you connect a social media platform with logins across the web. But I'm in the paranoid minority. Lots of folks love social logins for their ease of use. Another option that we have though is QR codes. So today I'm going to share why logins with QR codes aren't necessarily always good or bad, but it really depends on their implementation. So what exactly is a QR code? Well, this is a QR code. That stands for quick response and it's basically a barcode that has information embedded in side of it. They were originally designed by a guy named Masahiro Hara for the automotive industry way back in 1994. They've been around for a really long time, but the usage ended up being implemented all over the place after his employer made the QR code design available for free for use. A QR code usually contains data that points to a website or an application for product tracking, they can use them for item identification, joining a Wi-Fi network, general marketing, and eventually for law Logins. From your phone, QR codes are now used for displaying text or pop-ups, to add contacts, to connect to a network, open a website, compose text. They are read by an image sensor and interpreted by the system's processor. The reason why there are always three big black squares is for alignment, while the last corner is usually used just to normalize the size and the angle of the shot. Nowadays, they hold a lot more data and they look a lot more complicated, but the general theory behind QR codes is pretty much the same. I have seen them used for advertising at booths for conventions, at museums to exhibit about exhibits, and to connect to Wi-Fi networks, just to name a few examples. And just the other day, I saw a restaurant using QR codes to view their online menu so they could reduce the spread of COVID-19 by not sharing physical menus. I thought that was a pretty cool use and implementation of QR codes. Now, since QR codes became somewhat popular, iOS and Android eventually integrated scanning directly into the camera app so you don't have to use any kind of third-party app to scan a QR code anymore. So how do they work? Well, they are not magic. A supported scanner like your iPhone or Android phone can support URL redirection. So the QR code sends metadata to an app or a device like Chrome. QR codes are generated so that a computer can read them, even if 
they all look kind of the same to the human eye. To a device, the QR code looks like an encoded string of data, kind of like this one for joining a Wi-Fi network. It looks totally weird to us. Some of it kind of makes sense, but the camera in the computer understands how to process this correctly. Now, since QR codes can be used to open websites, it's also wise to pay attention to what QR codes you're actually scanning. For example, if a malicious actor made a QR code and stuck it on a bus stop, they could be linking to our URL that host malicious exploits that could activate upon scanning. Did I put something malicious in that QR code that I showed you earlier? I didn't, but you get the point. Anyone can scan a QR code and generate data from them, so why and how can they be used for single sign-on? Well, quite simply, QR codes are just a transport tool for information, so the idea of login with QR code can be kind of confusing and is not necessarily a true phrase. See, QR codes are basically plain computer text that any supported camera can read. So if they are implemented incorrectly, then they should not be acceptable for logging in. If they are implemented correctly, then they are a really great option. If not implemented correctly, they can also put consumers at risk. Attackers can clone QR codes used as one-time passwords if they have access to them, allowing the attacker to set up a phishing site and send it to the victim if it wasn't implemented correctly. Now that is called QR RL jacking or quick response code login jacking. You could also fall victim to counterfeit QR codes again, like I mentioned previously, where an attacker fishes the victim. So if they are used for authentication, they should only and only contain a random authentication session identifier, no personally identifying information that attackers could potentially steal. Lots of companies are already using QR codes as an option for logging in. For example, Discord allows allows you to log in with a QR code that is only valid for two minutes before it expires, but you can also still use your username and your password as a backup if you need to in Discord. QR codes, if implemented correctly and not as just a band-aid for usernames and passwords, can be a very easy solution for users, and they can even be used in pairing with other non-human readable credentials that can validate authentication, like a smart card or a physical token. Companies can help defend against QR code attacks and authenticate users correctly when using them if they follow a few crucial steps. So how can you determine if a QR code is safe for use and for authentication? Well, they should not contain any kind of personally identifying information again. They should only be generated by the resource a user is logging into. They should not be generated by the user logging in. They should not be allowed to be reused and they should be unique for each and every login attempt. So even if you're the same user and you're retrying attempts to log in, that QR code should be different every single time. Lastly, if the provider has not published their login algorithm, just don't consider it safe since security through obscurity, which everybody knows about, is not something that you should ever depend on. Oh, and by the way, if you need to blur a QR code that's used for logins, then it's not being implemented right. WWPass, as an example, does not reuse QR codes for authentication. So I actually don't need to blur my demos whenever I show you those on screen. I did blur one in an earlier video, but now I know better, so I'm not going to do that in the future. You can see my demos of WWPass in previous episodes as an example. Now in their case, the company's QR code is a string of random and unique bits for a transaction identifier. So anytime a user opens the site on a new device or a new browser, the QR code completely changes because it's dynamic. It's not a static QR code. So if somebody else scans the WW pass QR code, like through a man in the middle attack, with their own pass key, the transaction between them and WW pass will then be bound to the attacker's account. So is this our best current option? Well, it's definitely better, in my opinion, than social logins. I would like to know what you think as well down below in the comments, especially if you're an advocate for privacy and security like I am. Thank you again so much to my s'mores for subscribing and for watching. I'm Shannon Morris, and I will see you soon. Bye y'all!